Hey guys, Retro here. Today I'm going to watch an episode from a TV show called Married with Children. This is an old show from the 80s and 90s. Uh, this is season 2, episode 13 called You Better Watch Out. And this is the first Christmas themed episode that they ever did. Um, and this episode came out December 20th, 1987. So this is uh, going way back. Um, now this episode was considered controversial back then. Uh, it's pretty tame by today's standards. And I guess the show in general was considered controversial. Uh, some may still consider it to be. But again, you compare it to things like Family Guy and other shows on TV, it's uh, pretty tame. But anyway, um, I'm going to watch it and give my reactions or commentary or whatever. If you want to follow along, I'll count down and when I say play, that's when I'll play it. So let's go ahead and do it now. Three, two, one, play. Okay, there we go with the classic intro with the waterfall there. And the classic uh, Married with Children theme song, Love and Marriage by Frank Sinatra, I believe. Pretty classic, and you get the title there, starring Ed O'Neill, Katie Sagal, David Garrison, David Garrison, Amanda, Erz, Erz, whatever her name is, Christina Applegate, David Faustino. There's the house. Classic show for sure, and then you get the uh, the couch gag um, that they basically did for every season, but they updated it where Al's giving money to each member of the family gives money to Kelly, gives money to Peg, and then of course gives the money to the dog as well. And you can see Al's wearing a red shirt, which is kind of weird, and Peg doesn't yet have her signature look down pat yet, but she's working on it, and there's a young looking buck. And, okay, here we go. The following depicts a bunny Christmas. It could be upsetting the small children. Talking about uh, Al 
also in a real reindeer that you could ride at the Lakeside Mall. Why not Beck is explaining the uh, parachuting Santa? I was like, that's not what Christmas is about. It's about family and giving. So now he's gonna re-gift. Um, the plan is to re-gift all the stuff that, all the crap that his family gave him to Beck's family, which is weird. He never, I don't think they ever showed anyone from Al's family. Actually, no, they did in one episode um, where they, uh, his uncle died or something, and they had that, that uh, the will said, whichever male Bundy has a child in wedlock gets like a half a million dollars or something like that. But, anyways. Okay. Okay, they're gonna steal one of the neighbor's trees after the day after Christmas when they throw it out. So he's uh, done with Christmas already, and now the kids are uh, bothering him for presents. And Peg as well. It's like, you all want your presents, don't you? And Peg's like, no, we really love you in a sarcastic way. That's pretty funny. Mean but funny. So this is weird. He's like, it's Christmas Eve, and he's like, okay, let me go get my Christmas bonus and get your presents. Like, he waits till Christmas Eve to get his bonus and to buy presents. Like, who does that? Okay, so he left. And the family's gonna get um, Al's own clothes to give to him as a gift on Christmas. Okay. And Beck says she just loves Christmas. Okay, now we transition to them setting up the, uh, the base for the tree. Okay. Somebody rang the doorbell. I wonder who it's gonna be. Some random dude looking for the roads. Those are the neighbors. And uh, Peg says that she's Mrs. Rhodes, so she takes the, the package. Look at this delivery guy sticking out his hand for a tip. Like, wow, that's very uh, demanding. So she's like, bud, can you take care of that? And he just slams the door in the guy's face. That's pretty funny. So she unwraps the gift for the Rhodeses, which was obviously not for them. So now Al comes home. And Bud notices that he doesn't have any presents. And he's like, well, basically he didn't get a Christmas bonus this year because business was so bad. So of course he didn't get any, any presents. And of course, everyone's disappointed. It's like, you, you mean we told you we loved you for nothing? And Kelly's like, sorry, telling us there's no reason to live. And I was like, yes, I am. Pretty funny. And but he's still trying to, um, he thinks that uh, I was really good at giving him presents. He's just cutting out the women. That's what he thinks. He's getting nothing. Pretty loaded. And Becca's like Christmas without presents would be like our birthdays. That's pretty funny. And Al gives her a birthday kiss. So Bud's plan is to go to Lakeside Mall and get some uh, gift certificates when Santa jumps from the plane. So that's interesting. So the doorbell rings and it's Steve and Marcy, but you can see their shadow standing there to the window for like 10 seconds before they ring the doorbell. So they come with some presents, of course, from Lakeside Mall. Now says Peggy got her irregularity for Christmas. And these two. Bud and Kelly. So Al asks for his present, asks for his present, is great. So Steve and Marcy give him a donation to some women's uh, foundation or something like that in, in his name, under Al's name. National Organization of Women, for women, whatever. 
He's like, do I get tickets to their 10k man stump? So now they just give uh, the roads a, a fruitcake with a uh, footprint on it. And she thanks them. So now Steve wants to watch the news because he's like, maybe they're going to show uh, Santa skydiving to the lake Lakeside Mall. And I was like, why would they show that it's the news? They're not going to promote them all. And of course they do. So they mentioned uh, Santa's wearing high top Reeboks. So there's a reason for that. We'll see later. Okay. And Santa just jumped. What a beautiful free fall. It's like it's like mall where the shopping just isn't fun. It's news, and I was like, "Oh, come on!" That's pretty funny how he reacted like that. And now they notice something's going wrong. Santa's flapping his arms. You don't see it, but it just shows the family reacting to it. And now Santa's been blown off course. And now they lost him. I wonder where he could be. They hear a noise. They turn around and. Santa does a nose dive onto the patio. And if you look at Al's face on this part, he's, uh, you can tell he's trying not to laugh. And if I saw like an interview or something and he said that he was trying so hard not to laugh on that part. So now we cut to later where the police are investigating and you see Stephen and Marcy are just all sh you know, shaking and like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then it cuts to the bunnies at the table eating pizza and it's like they don't give a damn. They're just happy they're eating pizza. That's pretty funny. I think that's the funniest aspect of this um, episode is the, the uh, what's it called, the contrast between how the roads are handling this and how um, the bunnies end it, handling it. I was like, what do you want me to do, Steve? Quit eating. And Marcy's still freaking out. And uh, Steve's drinking some hard liquor. I was like, can you keep her quiet? We're trying to have Christmas here. Now comes in the detective with a mustache. This guy's very familiar. I can't remember where else I've seen him. Maybe it was a Seinfeld episode. I don't know. So he's just starting to ask, asking them questions. See, now this doesn't make sense. He's like, this, did anyone see him fall? And Bottle's like, I wish. But they all saw him fall. Like, literally, all of them turned around and saw him fall. So I don't get that, but... And now the detective's trying to convince Bud that uh, it wasn't the real Santa that fell. Okay. And now there's Buck with a, a high top Reebok sneaker. And he's holding it beside the road. And, and Steve's like, uh, is that your shoe, Al? He's like, nope. So that's Santa's shoe. And that's why they mentioned the, Re the Reebok speaker, be uh, speaker sneaker before. And then the detective's like, you know, that's uh, evidence. And he's like, oh, what the hell? Let him keep it. It's, or no, it's, he's like, what the hell? It's Christmas. Let him keep it. So that's pretty funny. Beck's like, come on, Marcy. These things happen. Marcy's like, when has this ever happened? That's, again, another pretty funny joke. So now Beck sits on the couch with a slice of pizza. Christmas pizza. She's about to eat it, Marcy, and then the guys walk out with a stretcher and Santa's body on it, covered with like a blanket or whatever, and she freaks out again. So now their cops are about to leave, and uh, oh, there's a bunch of kids out there, and they're like, we want Santa. So the detective closes the door, and basically he doesn't want to carry um, Santa's body um, out the door with those kids watching. So want to uh, emotionally disturb them for life. So he's like, we have to keep him here until those kids leave, basically. And Marcy keeps freaking out. So Steve is like, uh, it's okay, Marcy, I'll take you home. And they're about to leave. And kids ask him, um, 
asking her if he's okay. And she's telling them that he's fine. But she starts cracking, not cracking up like laughing, but like crying or whatever. I don't know why she calls the Bundy's killers. They didn't do it, but. So they bring uh, Marcy upstairs to lay down on the bed. Santa smells like beer 
He's like, catch me in five minutes, I'll smell like hard liquor. Okay, so he goes back inside and they hit him with a, a one more snowball in the back. He's like, well, they're gone. All dead guys and all the relatives out. But it's like so long, kill. She comes down, she's feeling a little bit better. But she sees uh, Al dressed like uh, Santa. And then Marcy's, she, Marcy's like, oh no, he was better off dead. It's pretty funny. So now some random guy uh, shows up at the door. And he's from the Lakeside Mall. And this kind of doesn't make sense. He comes to apologize. And then. So basically, um, so Al mentions that, uh, you know, um, he lied to the kids or pretended to be Santa to, so the kids wouldn't be upset or whatever. And then uh, I was like, hey, that's got to be worth something. And then uh, the guy from the mall is like, oh, really? He's like, well, I was going to, basically, he was going to get um, give them a check to say that they didn't, uh, to keep their mouth shut, basically, right? Because they don't want that bad publicity getting out but he's like oh since you the kids think Santa's okay because you pretended to be him then why should I give you this check and it doesn't make sense because well I mean the Bundys could still um, at this point go to the media and say yeah I landed in my yard or wherever they can still spill the beans you know what I mean so that was kind of where they should have paid him anyway but The detective's like, don't tie with your jewelry on. So implying that he stole the dead Santa's ring. See, now Peg is blaming Al for uh, dressing up as Santa and doing the nice thing for the kids and, and therefore ruining their chance to get money. But that doesn't make sense because that was Peg, Peg's idea for him to go. I remember she was like, you know, Al, you know what you have to do, Al. So it's her fault, not Al's fault. But anyway. So now they hear something in the backyard. And they go check and it is uh, basically Santa's sack. I guess it got stuck on a tree or something. It just fell down. And uh, or fell off the roof. And it's the full of $10 certificates for them all. So they're like, we're rich, we're rich. So basically they're gonna go to the Lakeside Mall and spend them. But first, a moment of silence. Cause we owe a lot to that jolly flat man. Okay, now they're rushing off to the mall. Now, you may wonder, or I wonder anyway, like, where's all the stuff that they bought? They must have been able to buy a lot of stuff. Oh, and then you see Buck playing with the, the shoe, Santa shoe in the backyard. But um, you'd figure that they could buy a lot of stuff with all those certificates, but you never see any of them, uh, any of this new stuff in later episodes. Um, but I figure, knowing the Bundys and knowing their luck, they probably got in trouble for, like, you could probably only spend one certificate per, per family or something like that. And they saw them, like, trying to spend um, all these certificates, so they probably ended up not getting any of that stuff. Just uh, speculation on my part, but... Anyway, that was the episode, pretty funny episode. Again, like I said, pretty tame compared to stuff you might see today on Family Guy, but I guess back then seeing Santa take a nosedive onto a patio was uh, pretty edgy, I guess, but uh, it was a pretty funny episode, and usually I don't like Christmas episodes of TV shows, of sitcoms, because um, I just find that they, maybe they don't try as hard because they're like, well, it's a Christmas episode, people are going to watch it, even if it stinks. Uh, but this one was actually pretty funny, so... Um, yeah, good episode. Uh, check it out if you haven't watched it in a long time. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it relaxing. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.